There are many ways to cast on for double knitting. <laughs> double knitting is all about um, knitting a reversible fabric and it's great for um, color work like you can see here and so what happens is on each side of the work the colors are inverted and this is especially great for any color work pattern patterns you have uh, they might have extremely long floats. Uh, it just comes out great. Um, so what we're going to focus on in this video is the cast on. And there are a lot of different ways to cast on for double knitting. The one we are going to do in this video is uh, very similar to a tubular cast on where it has this uh, seamless edge. I call it a seamless edge because it looks like the knit stitches just roll over the edge as if you had just knit this flat and <laughs> folded it over and uh, uh, sewed up the sides. Uh, so this is the cast on edge here. So this is what we are going to create. Uh, just a heads up, if you're uh, using this video as a reference, this cast on will take up these first two rows of, um, of knit stitches here. So the actual cast on gives you uh, one stitch on each side, and then we'll work back across a row, which gives us that second row of knit stitches here. So this cast on is going to take up the first two rows here. Uh, in this little coaster, uh, but really what we're focusing on is getting this this edge here. So let's get started. Let me put my coaster to use here. So I'm going to be working with two uh, very contrasting colors. I have a white and a beautiful dark green. Uh, but there are no rules in knitting. <laughs> uh, you can use whatever uh, two colors you like. But it is very helpful if they are uh, contrasting. I think it makes it a lot easier to see what's going on and which side is which. Um, so to start, I'm going to hold both strands together and just make a uh, slip knot. Wow. <laughs> muscle memory fail uh, with both colors and we're just going to put this on the needle and the orientation of the colors it does not at all matter this slip knot is only here to um, hold the yarn in place because we are going to perform like a long tail cast on here so I need something to be able to hold the yarn as I tension it um, so this does not count as one of your cast on stitches. It is just here to help hold the yarn. So, uh, uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, it does not matter which color you start with, as long as you continue in an alternating pattern uh, between white, green, white, green, white, green. Uh, but if you're following a pattern where uh, the order of the stitches does matter, where the pattern is starting off right off the bat in that first row, uh, then make sure you follow that pattern. Right. Uh, but what I'm going to do is hold um, the white yarn in the back and the green yarn in the front. It does not really matter. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to, I've got the needle in my right hand. I'm going to use my pointer finger to hold this slip knot in place so it doesn't slide off the end of the needle. I've got one yarn over my pointer finger, another yarn over my thumb, and I'm tensioning them with my other fingers here. So what we're going to do is be moving our needle over and under to cast on stitches here. So uh, I'm going to start with uh, grabbing the white yarn. So I'm going to go under the green, grab the white, and pull it forward. Now I'm going to move my pointer finger to hold that <laughs> stitch in place so it doesn't slide off. So now that I've put a white stitch on here, I need a green. 
So I'm going to go under both strands, but from, from the back, so under here, grab the green this way and pull it back. Okay. So what we have here, I'll do a little close up, is a knit stitch in white and a purl stitch in green. Right? So we're casting on here with the white side facing us and the green side on the back. <laughs> uh, but we're just going to keep alternating in this way. These two together count as your first stitch. So I've cast on one stitch. So I'm going to do this again. So uh, from the front, under the green, grab the white, pull it forward. Then from the back, go under both strands, grab the green, pull it back. Again, keep moving this pointer finger to, to hold those stitches in place so they don't slide off the needle. Um, another tip, especially if you're new to this kind of cast on, it is very helpful to keep your stitches from rotating around the needle. So if you can keep these um, oriented this way, keep them from twisting around the needle. It's going to make your life easier. <laughs> uh, if you've done this before, then you know that if they rotate around, it, from experience, you can learn how to rotate them back, and then it's not a big deal. Uh, but if you can, it will make your life a little bit easier if you can keep them oriented this way. Okay, so now I have two stitches on, white, green, white, green, that's two. And so we'll just keep going across until we get however many stitches you need for your pattern, right? So from the front, underneath, grab the back strand. From the back, underneath both, grab the front strand, pull it back. So to help keep them from rotating around the needle, I'll use more of my hand to hold the, hold the stitches here to keep them from rotating. Okay, I have the number of stitches that I need, and so now at the end, you'll notice this is not at all locked in. So if you remove this tension and let the strands fall, this can easily come undone. So don't let go just yet. In fact, what I like to do is uh, take these yarns and twist them twice. So once and twice. Just, um, I guess, one whole turn, <laughs> two half turns. Um, so the white started in the back, and then I rotated, rotated. I got the white in the back again uh, to lock this in. And I'm going to make sure to hold it. <laughs> so I've dropped my hand here. I'm holding it all here. And I'm going to turn my work, turn my needle here. And again, it's not locked in at all. So if you set this down and walk away, it can all fall apart. 
So what we're going to do is work back across that first row and then everything will be locked in and nothing will be falling out, right? So what we've done so far, my reference coaster here, is um, this first V stitch you see on each side here. But it's not locked in, so I need to work back across uh, with some stitches here. So the first color in the row, so I have a green stitch first, tells me I'm on the green side. So on this row, green is the main color and white is the secondary color. Okay. Uh, when we go back across the other way, white will be first. So white will be the main color and green will be the secondary. So whichever color shows up first tells you which side you're on. Just like th with this one, with the gold and white, this is the gold side on the back is the white side. All right. Now I like to hold um, one strand in each hand. That's just my uh, preference and style, but you can certainly hold your yarn however is most comfortable for you. Um, so again, we're gonna knit the green stitch and I'm going to knit that in green. That first stitch is always the most fiddly. Okay. Now we're gonna purl the white with white, but I need to have both strands of yarn in the front. So this is what will hide all the floats in between the two layers of knitting, right? So now move both strands to the back knit uh, the green and green, move both strands to the front, purl the white in white. And you may not be using green and white, so knit, so both strands in the back, knit the main color in the main color, move both strands to the front, purl that secondary color in the secondary color. Move both strands to the back and you just keep repeating all the way across. It should be easier now. It's just that first stitch that is the most fiddly. Keep your tension unless you want your cast on to be loosey-goosey, but keep your tension. All right, so I've made it all the way to the end, and this is our slip knot, which does not count as a cast on stitch, so we are not going to work it. All we're going to do is slide it off the needle. And that's it. We have finished this seamless cast on. <laughs> uh, so you can see our cast on gives us those first two stitches it look like they're rolling into each other and then when we worked across the row we get um, that second row so we've created this edge here as well as the next row of stitches here we go So you may be wondering what to do with that slip knot. And the answer is leave it there for one more row, okay? Because you'll notice this on this white strand here. This uh, stitch on the needle is kind of being held in by that strand in the slip knot. 
So just leave the slip knot there if you need to adjust it so it holds better. Uh, but the, the slip knot just needs to stay here for one more row that you work across. And then after that, you can undo the slip knot and, and weave in the ends. We, I like to leave them hanging until I'm done with the project and then weave in my ends. Uh, but uh, again, that's just there to hold the two strands while you're working in the beginning for those first two rows. Uh, and then you can undo it 